So the end of that kind of dovetailed with your first work with the Guess Who, which of course came at the expense of uh, of, of Mr. Curran, who was unfortunately Curran. Curran. No, 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 uh, Carl. Carl, Carl Dixon. Dixon. Sorry, Carl Dixon. Yeah. And um, so you started. You you took over on a temporary basis at first, That's and right. then That's that right. turned into a full time gig. How do you know that? <laughs> No, I guess they, pro the they probably expected him to recover enough. Yes, but. well, yeah, okay, so that, what year was that? 2007, 2008? 2000, whatever it was, uh, I had, uh, I had just, uh, yeah, I got a call, I think it was in May, I think it was in May or April, uh, and I got a call saying, uh, you know, they needed somebody to fill in because Carl, was, I, I knew Carl, I played with him, you know, uh, in a few gigs actually, and I'd known him for quite some time. And uh, so everybody was freaked out because, the, the, you know, he, I mean, he, could, he got in a bad accident. His, his whole body was mangled, so I figured, you know, and I think they auditioned a couple of people, they didn't just go with me, but, I, you know, I had met Gary Peterson well, we had talked at length at the SARS Festival, when we played the SARS Festival uh, in 2003, and we just, him and I just hit it off. So I, I, I don't know whether that had anything to do with it, but I came in figuring I would be there, yeah, maybe a month. And then it, it, it became clear that, that it, Carl's recovery was going to take a long time. And then, and then what happened is in, there was another tour coming up in the fall that I, that I had kind of committed to, and it came to the point where it's like, you know, guys, I, I gotta, this is gonna pay me a lot of money. I, I gotta, I gotta either shit or get off the pot. Do you want me to stay or do you want me to leave? And they really wanted me to stay. And, uh, you know, the, the agent, uh, I guess, really liked what I was doing. And, and uh, hopefully, well, I guess they did because I'm still there. <laughs> so how did it feel, I mean, stepping into the vocal slot of a Canadian oh, legend, crazy. Burton Cummings, and then, and then, and then even Mr. Dixon is quite a good vocalist mm -hmm. too. So I mean, that's quite big shoes to fill. You did you have any fears going into that or? No, no, no because I don't get afraid of that kind of stuff. It's just to me, it's just music. I, you know, it was hard because I didn't really know a lot of the songs. I I knew the songs in the periphery of my mind, uh, but I wasn't like one of those diehard fans. And, and a lot of those songs are very wordy. And, and I had to learn the whole thing in five or six days, right? So, you know, I was sitting here, you know, I'm a runner, so I put my headphones in and I run around and I just go over these lyrics in my head. And, blah, blah, blah. and the first show I did was down in Houston for about 5,000 people. And of course, they're all worried because they think they almost had to fold the band. They had no singer. So they're concerned, who's this fucking guy coming in and this and that. So the agent drove down from Minneapolis. All these people came to see the first show. And uh, so out we come. They're playing the intro music. And I'm standing there and I've, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm pretty prepared, right? I, I don't use charts or anything. I always learn the song. And uh, I, I uh, uh, just, uh, went to go out on stage. And I can't think of the first line of Bus Rider. Mm -hmm. For the life of me, I can't think of it. And I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> this is it. Oh God. And you know, about a split second before I had to sing, it came to me. And I sang the whole show top to bottom. I was like, I had fucking three horseshoes up my ass. <laughs> Unbelievable. So not only vocally, but I mean, guess who was blessed with some great guitar players? Uh, mm -hmm. Randy Bachman, mm -hmm. Kurt yeah. Winter, who yeah. was a really underrated guitar player, and yeah. then Dominic Troiano in the later years. Oh, yeah, Dom. Yeah. So I mean, you had to fill in a lot of those parts. Uh, how, yeah, well, how they have that? another guitar player, uh, Laurie McKenzie, and he does uh, a lot of the lead stuff. Uh, although we do, you know, I do a little bit, and, and we do like a guitar duel in the middle of shaking, shaking all over, and I do a little, uh, I do a little crazy, whittly thing before uh, American Woman with, with after Gary does his drum solo, and uh, yeah, it's it's great. It's a good band, you know. And listen, we played it. <laughs> I would say maybe half a million people every year, and you know, the people are just people are just happy to. to it's like you it's know, music from a good time. Exactly, and people they're love going it. back. It makes them feel like a kid. Yeah. Right. 
you know, I'm sure there, there's always there's a few diehards who would like to see like anything, you know, like would like to see the four originals back together. You know, geez, I would like to see that too, but I, the likelihood of that is is, is pretty slim, I would think. Uh, but uh, but yeah, people love it, and uh, like. Uh, a lot of the bands we play with actually are like that. They're, everybody's missing a member now, yeah. or a couple of members, yeah. or, or whatever. You know, the Sticks is a great example because uh, um, Tommy's a very good friend of mine, and uh, they they have uh, Dennis who goes out and does his thing, and then they have Sticks who go out and do their thing, and 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 it's like both camps have their own set set of fans. <laughs> but you know. So, so you, like, half a million, uh, how many gigs are we talking about a year, an average year for you guys? First year was like 60, and then it went down from there. Uh, it, uh, I think the mandate is about 50 a year, because we fly to every show, so there's a travel day the day before and a travel day the day after, so, you know, do the math, it could be about 140 days a year. How many of those other guys are still based in Winnipeg? Jim lives in Winnipeg, Jim Kale. Uh, and, the, and the crew and the, and the guitar player and the keyboard player, Gary, lives in, uh, in Greensboro, North Carolina. No, North Carolina. And I'm the only one from uh, the great uh, state of Ontario. All right. So other than that, um, what else do you do to keep busy? What other projects do you uh, have on the go or things you're working on? I know you still work as SAS's musical director occasionally. Or? Well, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't use the word musical director uh, so much because I'm not involved. I'd like to be more involved. <laughs> well, I have seen some YouTubes of you guys doing a, a two-person show where you'll, oh, yeah, you'll yeah. play acoustic guitar. Yeah. Like, and these will be a lot more like more private concerts. Or, around film festivals. Yeah, and we did Sundance a couple and, yeah. of years ago. The thing is, is, you know, we've been, we've played together so much and we've written a lot of songs together and we, we've, you know, her and I could get a thing together in, in a matter of an hour. We know, we know what each other's going to sing and we, what each other's going to do, you know, that, that's a luxury in this day and age. So, and, and listen, I'm not going to lie to you, it's one of the hardest gigs to play guitar on, and drums for that matter. You know, there's a lot of, been through a lot of guitar players over the years, and, uh, and it's, it, it, it sounds, like some of the songs sound easy, but there, there's a lot of subtleties to it. To, to hey, the there's, a lot, there's a lot of Stevie Solace and Richie Kotzen in the background yeah, of that stuff. Yeah, you know, stuff. that kind of stuff, and those guys are, you know, great guitar players, and, and, um, and it's just... I like the workout. That's why I like doing it because I, every time I play with Sass, my fingers are killing me. <laughs> Even when we used to play like ad nauseum. I mean, when I first started playing with her, we were doing, we played like sixty shows in in you know a few months. It was crazy. It was good though. Tell me, were were you and Sass together when she was doing the the Broadway thing, the Janice thing? Yeah. So did you meet uh, Dana? Who also did that gig for a while, Dana Fuchs? Why do I know that name? Well, she's a probably about six foot two blonde bombshell who, with curly ringy hair, who, who used to spell sass. They used to share that gig at one point. I re I met a couple of girls that did it. Okay. I don't remember the name Dana though, but you know what? It could have been. You know who was on that gig? Was uh, Joel. Uh, uh, Hoekstra. Oh yeah. You know that guy? He's probably the busiest guitarist alive. It's crazy. It's funny because we were hanging out at that time. You know, I, I went down. I saw the show about ten. It was amazing. It was. It was. You know, you gotta. You gotta picture Sass singing nineteen Janis Joplin songs. That's a tough and gig. One night. That's oh a tough gig. Oh my God. She had to. Uh, well, she. That's when she found Don Lawrence, the vocal coach, that really helped. You know, because that's, that's oh, yeah. intense. Um, and, and she wasn't really, that, that wasn't her thing, Janis Joplin, at all. I mean, a lot of people compare it to it, but, you know, she's more, you know, Bad Company, Aerosmith, that's her thing, right? Uh, but, um, but, yeah, Joel. So fast forward, where am I going with this? Fast forward to, I think, two years ago, we were playing in Cincinnati and Night Rangers opening for us. And I'm, I'm at the pool just uh, relaxing before a sound check, and I see this guy, 
He's got, he didn't, his hair wasn't as long back then. But yes, this guy's walking around the pool. And he turns around and I see the, the, the name on the back of his shirt. A uh, hoaxer. I was like, fuck, there's only one guy. I've ever, that, I know that I've ever seen that name. So I said, are you Joel? He goes, yeah, I know, for fuck's sakes. And then we had this reunion. And we played and we uh, got totally drunk that night and had a great time with, uh, with Brad and, and him and I. And uh, he's, a, he's a great guitar player. You can and, still rock in America. Oh my God. <laughs> they, they were great, man. Night Ranger. I mean, I only know really that one song. That, uh, Don't tell me you love me. You know? Oh yeah, yeah. Sister Christian. Life. Yeah, <laughs> it was great. They were really nice guys. That was the gig where my guitar got stolen too. I had oh. this beautiful Gibson, you know, one uh, e at EC one sixty five a cutaway, and it had this these stars on the on the neck. And just I loved this guitar. And some guy, there's about maybe thirty thousand people at this festival outside. Some guy grabs the guitar and walks away with it through the crowd through the there's police everywhere it's cincinnati right crime capital of america this guy just walks out with it so they had put it up a picture we had pictures of it on the gibson site everywhere you know just with me playing it so you know but i never got it back i was i'm pretty disappointed but whatever so now we're talking gear. How about uh, running us through your rig for uh, a typical Guess Who show? Well, it's we because we fly to shows. It's always rented backline. So my my rig uh, is generally a deluxe, a, a, a reissued deluxe reverb blackface through a four twelve with greenbacks, which is uh, something I, I love to do. I have an old sixty four deluxe at home. And I run it through an old Marshall cabinet. It's great when you're playing like in smaller venues because it's not as loud as the Marshalls. And um, so I use that whenever I can get it, which is most of the time. And the, um, I don't really use much on that gig. It's not really a guitar gig. I have a wah wah pedal and a uh, you know a crybaby, I have a tremolo thing for the you know those two saw a clap for the woman man and American woman had that tremolo thing, and uh, and then. I have a deal. I have a deal with uh, um, with um, Dunlop pedals. Uh, with that, uh, they have kind of a tube screamer uh, overdrive knockoff. It's a green pedal. That's a really nice pedal. I like that. Do you have a deal with strings and picks? Whose uh -huh. stuff? Whose stuff are you using? Uh, stay in tune sits strings, uh, and uh, um, I think the whole band gets them. I'm not too sure, but we but. Uh, they're great. I love them. I use them on everything, and uh, and they're free. <laughs> Unlike the, a lot of these, we were just talking about that yesterday. I don't I don't know how much you know about uh, endorsement deals, but it seems like everybody under the sun is getting one these days. But I think I think the the, the new endorsement is is we'll give you stuff for you know for cost. And we'll put your name on our website. In yeah, other words, you still it's gotta, usually cost. Yeah, you still got to pay. Yeah, you know, they ain't giving stuff away. It's like guys people. these days who are getting into fractal audio stuff, which costs like five grand. Yeah, they're still paying costs. They're still paying three grand or four grand. Exactly, so. exactly. Well, that was my thing with Gibson. Was it was four? It was, hey, it's a good deal. I mean, forty below cost, but uh, but mind you, you know, they don't play as well as my old Gibson. <laughs> That's um, the acoustics. I've had. I'm not going to lie to you. I've had some trouble with. The, the, I don't know what it is with the wood, but uh, you know. Well, didn't, I, didn't they recently snarl the, the Fender guy away to work at Gibson on the acoustic I'm sure. division? I'm not Something sure. Like but that. I'll tell you what. I have this old '58 J45. Right? It's a piece of shit. It's it's all it's all like it's it's in horrible shape. I, me and my friend Barry. Uh, put a pickup in it while well, he did it I watched uh, you know years ago like just this under the bridge pickup thing you know and I just plug it in and I swear to God every time I use this guitar the the, the front of house guy goes that's the best acoustic so uh, sound I've ever had wow now, maybe it, maybe some of it is the guitar itself but there's no EQ there's no <laughs> nothing it's just this is what you get and uh, and I love playing it it's my favorite guitar ever I do most of my writing on it. Uh, I'm a little afraid to take it out because it's so old, but I have. I've taken it out with Sass a few times. 
How long, uh, how long ago did you get that Gibson deal? It's been over a year now, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, a couple years maybe. Uh, not sure. I was involved. I had a, a bit of a thing with the, the when I was doing the Idol tours. We we had uh, the Gibson uh, Canada provided us with a bunch of stuff, but it's the same thing. It it it, it you know. I don't want to say anything bad about anybody, but yeah, I just, I just, I like my own guitars, right? It's, it's a personal thing. You know, it, just because something says Gibson on it doesn't mean it's going to be great. And, you know, it, I, I have guitars that, that aren't, that are, you know, I have an Ibanez, uh, the custom agent that I, I, I love playing. You know? Okay, let's talk about uh, who would you consider your 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 greatest inspiration on vocals and then on guitar. Gee, that's tough. I I, I just I love every kind of music. <laughs> you know, I think that's the thing. You know, when I was a kid, I I I had ten records, and they were all hand me downs, of course, right? I had, uh, you know, one was an Elvis record, one was a Buddy Holly record, one was Glenn Miller, one was Frank Yankovic. <laughs> the polka king and you know it, it's to me it didn't matter you know it was just all music to me and so I, I became I was a big I have a, a big affinity for, for jazz and swing music I love classical music I really like that early 70s era neoclassical you know Argent uh, kind of you know what I'm talking about yeah for sure uh, uh, what's that what's that band uh, Curved, uh, curved air, curved air, <laughs> like that. Eddie weird, Jobson, whatever, just weird. I like that kind of stuff, but I also like the monkeys. I like cheesy, you know, pop music. I love Steely Dan. I love the Beatles. I love Jesus. I don't know. I don't. I don't think I could point to one person. I've had phases where you know, which maybe lasted a year. Right when I was eighteen, I was really into Rush. Learned every song. Started out learning Beatles was in the rush, learned all the guitar stuff, and the bass, and the drums, and then uh, I was into Steve Vai for a while, till I met him. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, Van Halen... Um... Let's talk about Van Halen. There's always been this rumor out there that at one point in time, Van Halen was seriously considering going forward with a female vocalist, and we know who that person is, if it is in fact true. Yeah, well, I'm sure there's tons of information on the I mean she's given that interview many times so what that's happened true. how it's come true. it never happened was Eddie well, in, she thought, just in a bad way at that time or? no I don't know I really don't know but I'll, 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 I'll tell you what I know uh, she was going up there every day and uh, they, they, I mean he lived literally a minute and a half up the, up the, the mountain and she'd go up there, and I, I don't know what they were doing, they are jamming, whatever they were doing. And, uh, and after about a month, it had dawned on her, that like, why, are, you know, why, why is this happening? And then, uh, I think Ray, Ray Daniels was managing them at that time, and, 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 uh, and she was having coffee with Ray, say, and she said to him, you know, I, I, think, I think these guys are trying to, like, get me in the band or something. And Ray was like, of course they are. Why do you think you're going up there every day? <laughs> She's like, well, I think that's a terrible idea. <laughs> Having a chick singer singing hot for teacher, it, was, it, it would have been a terrible idea, you know, in hindsight. It would have been cool to maybe maybe do one song or two, maybe, you know, and have a really ripping singer. But, I don't know. Look what happened to poor Gary Sharon. <laughs> he was the nicest guy you could ever meet. But... Many think he was a female singer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah, could have been. He's yeah. a little uh, androgynous, but who isn't? Um, but, you know, ultimately, uh, uh, yeah, I'm a big Roth era fan, right? That, that was it for me. That, that, was, was, that was the fun times, the good times, the exactly. party times. They were the best band I had ever seen when I saw them play like that. They were the most entertaining. They, they did it all. You know, you, you can't say enough about Van Halen, really. Even if you don't like them, you gotta like them. Yeah. It's just, you know, it's just nutty. And, and, and then, you know, really, 
Al, actually, I got some gear from him. I'll tell you a quick story, and, and this is much to the... Uh, 5150? Much to the envy of my friend Nini, because, uh, 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 you know, we were hanging out with Al a lot. You know, it, it, he, we'd go out for dinner, and he had just, he was going through a divorce. He had just met uh, his current wife. So we'd go out and we hung out, and he's actually the one that, that's, that told us we should be together and get, and get married. It was because of him. Uh, and uh, uh, so we ha I had a PV endorsement at the time, which I actually got the, gig, the, the gear for free. But they would give me anything but a 5150 for some reason. So I admit, I'd mention it, or Sass mentioned it to Al. Next thing you know, Two days later, I'm at home, and I and I hit uh, I hit my answering machine. It's like, oh hi, Derek. Uh, Eddie Van Allen here. Uh, sorry, I didn't get back to you sooner. Uh, I was calling some uh, hair salon in BC. I must have had the wrong number. Well, oh, listen, blah 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 blah. If you want a couple of amps, no problem. I'll send you some. I got some guitars too. Listen, uh, give me a call. Here's my home number, <laughs> and uh, I'll just be out and about for a while. Blah 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 blah. Uh, that's, that's the gist of it. It was some endless message. Hang up, and I'm like. <laughs> Did that just happen? Is this Earth? So I immediately called up my friend to play it for him because I knew he'd just shit his pants, which he did. And I called him up. We had this long conversation about, you know, blah, this and that. I, I wasn't, to be honest with you, I wasn't really interested in the guitars. I didn't want to seem like a greedy pig. So uh, he sent me, I said, yeah, I'll try it. He said, use the straight cabinet, not the slant, because the slant was shit. And, uh, and he sent me a couple of heads and a couple of four twelves. In, in like two days, they they showed up at my house. So I started using them, of course. And and then uh, the the problem was is those amps uh, you pretty much sound like Van Halen, and it it wasn't really right for the gig I was doing. So that was that's my story. But he did call my house. And that's it, a cool story. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what are the chances of that? But anyways. So how, how about a plug now for uh, the next upcoming gigs for you guys? Yeah, I'm uh, you know, guess who we're playing in Niagara Falls, New York on Saturday night. Uh, I get to drive to a gig. Woohoo! <laughs> and um, we're playing outside uh, in front of the Hard Rock. And then uh, we're going on a, on a... We're pretty busy this time of year. But nowhere around around here. We're, uh, we're going... We're making our way from, I think, the the Midwest all the way out to, to uh, Seattle. And then we're playing another Canadian show in Vernon, BC, BC, and then coming home. All right. Well, I want to thank you for your time. It's oh, been thanks, great chatting with you. And, uh, yeah, it, was a, it was a nice surprise. I hope, uh, I hope this is interesting. <laughs>